I'm Heath Fox, Executive Director of the La Jolla Historical Society. In this recorded oral history, three of the Society's board members share family memories and reflect on their experiences during the COVID-19 pandemic. Projects like this create a framework for understanding shared experiences and provide future generations a lens through which to view our collective history. If you would like to participate in our Corona Chronicles History Project, write to us at info at lajoyahistory.org and share your story. Hi, my name is uh, Molly McLean, and I'm a professor of history at the University of San Diego and a member of the La Jolla Historical Society's Board of Directors. So it's been interesting to me recently to reflect on the history of pandemics. Uh, what we're living through today would have been commonplace in the 19th century. Uh, people in the Victorian era endured wave after wave of epidemic disease, anything from influenza to smallpox, tuberculosis, and the germ theory of disease was unknown and there were no reliable medical cures. So people who had gotten sick and recovered came to believe that their continued survival required them to live in a place with a better climate. And this was the start of the so-called climate cure that led to the development of sanitariums along the French Riviera and bungalows in Southern California. So I have a long history here in San Diego and quite a number of my ancestors came in search of the climate cure. Um, one of them was a man named Silas Lapham Griffith uh, from Danby, Vermont. And he had made a fortune in lumber milling and was known as the Vermont Lumber King. Uh, he arrived in 1903 uh, hoping to improve his lungs, uh, which had been very badly damaged by tuberculosis. So um, La Jolla, of course, also attracted a lot of health seekers. Uh, the former owners of La Jolla's Windermere Cottage, uh, John and Agnes Kendall, came from England to San Diego to improve their health. And so did Anson Mills and his wife, Eleanor, who became La Jolla's first real estate agent. Um, Ellen Browning Scripps, who I've done a lot of research on, um, she actually decided to build her house in La Jolla so that her sister Annie, uh, who suffered from crippling rheumatoid arthritis, uh, could enjoy the sunshine and fresh air along the coast. So in terms of my personal experience, I've been working very hard <laughs> um, as a historian and as a teacher. Um, I've been working at home since mid-March, uh, teaching university classes, history classes, at the University of San Diego via Zoom. <laughs> and we've all, I suspect, learned Zoom uh, this spring. So I have approximately 25 students in each class. I've got two classes. And it turns out, actually, that Zoom is a great platform. Um, we can see each other, we can talk, we can debate, we present speeches. Although, you know, in mid-March, when I first started this, I was terrified. And I mean terrified. You know, it's actually turned out to be just great. So all is well in my world. My family are safe. They're healthy. Um, and we are just all getting through these very difficult times. Well, I'm Ann Craig, and my husband was Roger Craig. Uh, my husband was passionate about historic preservation, uh, went on the board very early, was chair of the board, so I finally agreed I would serve on the board, and I've now been on the board probably six years. I had lived in La Jolla, amazingly enough, for three years, from when I was three until when I was six, which was during World War II, my father was stationed at Coronado Island, and he bought a house in La Jolla on Cuvier Street and had my mother and me come out from Ohio. So during that period that we were out here, I guess when I was four years old, I was enrolled in the Balmer School uh, preschool, nursery school, and then kindergarten, I went to La Jolla Elementary. 
Uh, meanwhile, uh, I live in the house now where my husband's family lived. And then, interestingly enough, they were also living here during World War II. But that does remind me of my memory of the night when my mother would turn out the lights, pull the shades. We had to, it had to be blackened. And then I have this memory of going to the grocery store and having to sit at the front. I couldn't go around the grocery store with my mother. And I guess that must have been a fear that a child might pick up a jar and break it, which of course makes you think of today when you're going through the grocery store, as I did this morning at 6 a.m., where the seniors can go to Vons, um, things aren't on the shelves. There are empty shelves. And I guess during World War II, that would have been the same thing. I don't know whether people stockpiled. Uh, today, I had to, of course, keep six feet away from the people shopping with me. But everybody was masked, and we were being very careful. Well, the first month of this was kind of interesting. I travel a lot. I'm on a lot of committees. Uh, I'm very busy. And it was kind of nice to step back, maybe not have to uh, organize my life so much. I've now come to a point where I'm a little tired of that, and I'm wanting more social time. Uh, we've got Zoom, we've got FaceTime, phones, email, texting. I mean, we've got a lot of ways of communicating, but it's not the same. I know I'm missing my family terribly. So we all get together. So we're all on uh, Zoom, and it's wonderful. I had a, uh, a quick conversation with my uh, granddaughter, who's a senior in high school. And her prom has been canceled. Her graduation has been canceled. And I said to her, well, you might be saying to your grandchild, who's a senior in high school someday, well, let me tell you a story about my senior year. We're living with an unknown. And again, I guess that's a parallel with the war. Certainly my mother was out here not knowing when she would be leaving, when she would see the rest of her family again. So that's the, the thing we live with and trying to just take things day by day and not panic and not get stressed and try to be as relaxed as possible. Hi, my name is Shona MacArthur. And uh, it's hard to believe uh, that 50 or 100 years from now, people will actually want to know what we experienced during the COVID-19 epidemic. The thing that happened to La Jolla as a community and the entire region and the world was really World War II. And I felt that was really the, something that might be quite similar to our time today. Um, my great-grandfather, Brackenberry, lived in, on Cave Street during the war. And after Pearl Harbor, um, the community and my family was terrified that we would be bombed as well. And the reality of that, um, we saw in posters, this um, poster that was posted in La Jolla with a, a map of the town and with instructions to households, um, instruction in case of blackout, immediately turn off all lights, remain indoors, do not use the telephone, lie down in the event of an explosive bomb, if driving, park car immediately. I walk regularly along Windensea, and there above the beach, the whole area is cordoned off with these yellow tapes, and the, you can't sit on the beaches. The police are stationed there. And there are signs posted, social distance, six feet. And you know who would think to collect those signs? But those, too, will be in one day artifacts of this time. So Grandpa Rackenberry was also a, an air warden, and he wrote a book about his time during the war. Um, when shrieking sirens blow their blast, fearful that I might turn out last, I kick myself awake so fast I tumble out of bed. I grab my whistle and I shout, at every house I pass, lights out. 
a gas mask ready for my snout, a tin hat for my head. Then, as I rush along the street, I say to everyone I meet, take shelter for the love of Pete. The Japanese are after you. I stop all cars. I sniff for gas. I won't allow a truck to pass. And he goes on and on. So um, we also have our masks today, which we're required to wear now. So there is a, a parallel there as well. And we have our rationing in the markets, uh, much like they did during war. For some crazy reason, people are hoarding toilet paper and paper products. Like now, we're having shortages of beef. They had shortage of beef during the war uh, because the beef was going to the soldiers. And victory gardens. Um, many of my friends have planted fruits and vegetables um, because people are afraid that what they might buy in this, they're afraid to go to the stores. And they're afraid if they buy something, it might be contaminated. The really tragic thing that's taking place is, of course, um, the shops are closed. I think we're all very, very concerned about the future of the community, how these, these shop owners will survive. We are trying to see the good in this. Um, maybe it'll make us share more. Uh, care for others, um, support our community and our shops more to help them survive. Um, maybe with the air being cleaner, not only here, but across the world, maybe we'll drive less and care more about our environment. So today we're fighting the war against COVID-19 and we hope that there'll be a victory very soon. <laughs>